Okay, viewers, well, I don't actually remember that video I did in this TV when I put the HD box on it. And I was saying how it had interruption down here in the picture. I don't know if we'd have noticed that in the video. But um, I finally got around to tracing what the hell the problem could have been. Unless, I've got a pickle of it, it's sucky. On this little neck board, which, yeah, they put these Chinese baths, it's put this bloody glue on here. So when it comes to the country, um, the rough terrain or whatever the hell, rough handling or something doesn't make the parts fall off, they glue them so they stay on. But when you pull them off to service it, the whole cup, uh, cover comes off the neck. And it's stuck on the board. But yeah, I'm really expecting this, this is a green gun, because this, this is the green one that's got the problem. It's got that little pictures all twisted like that on the bottom. And it doesn't line up on the convergence properly. These two are right, but this one is not. It's um, not lining up. So yeah, that little resistor there in front of that heat sink, bit of um, IC is, actually underneath it, I've noticed it's got bad solder joints and it's cooked them pretty bad. And I just touch it with the finger and it's nearly virtually sitting there. So I think that's probably why the picture wasn't very good because that resistor had a bad connection. Another thing I want to make a note of, these STKRCs are right. I looked at the data sheets on Google and apparently these are genuine Sanyos. Made in Japan, the proper real deal. So they're fine, so I don't need to worry about changing it. Pretty interesting how a Chang Hong Celestial TV uses good parts like that. Yeah, I think they're celebrating 50 years of TV manufacturing too, this company. So I think that, um, based on my research, they're China's first TV manufacturer and, and the second largest manufacturer in the world. <laughs> surprise, surprise. There's one capacitor I replaced, that G Luxon pile of crap, made of an LG TV. I think it was a 33 microfarad, but I put a 47 microfarad one. I didn't have any 33s, so I just stuck a 47 one in. I don't think it really matters that much. Just the tolerance, as long as it's within tolerance. Here's another capacitor, which I got. This was loosely, just very badly soldered on, which I think is a pile of crap anyway. That's worse than the GLUX on that brand there, TLC. That's a 33 microfarad 250 volt, which came off the back just see behind it next to that connector with the wires on it. Behind that is where that capacitor came from. I'm going to be replacing that with this G Luxon 250 volt, same voltage rating, 47 microfarad instead of 33. So, so, yeah, I don't know what the hell those they had TLC capacitors fail on me before, so I'm not putting that one here back in. That's going to go in. Then, what a soldering line's heating up, I'm going to touch up that resistor, wrap that capacitor in. So you've got to be very careful here. And this TV hasn't been turned on in a while, so just be very cautious when you're working on things like this. And when you're working on CRTs, be very careful around the neck. You don't want to neck the tube or break those pins off or do any sort of damage to the tube. So yeah, here's a trick part, is getting that capacitor in and not breaking the traces off, which are done here. The traces actually came off, so I had to push them up and solder them. And it's just sitting on there now. Luckily they're still attached, so there's a very low quality circuit boards on this TV. But yeah, I'll stick that capacitor in, touch up that resistor, see if I can find anything else. I'll put it back on and see how good the convergence can get. If the pitch all lines up around here, there's no disturbance in the picture, I'll be happy. Okay, viewers, cap solid installed in the back there. Resistor's been touched up, another dry joint I have found. So hopefully if I just very, 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 very carefully place this back on. I mean, bloody carefully because it's delicate as all hell. Except when you want to smash it on purpose to never break. But yeah, be very careful with CRTs. Not only should it be cautious, but take care that there's no high voltage to charge in a meter, so. There's always be a pain in the ass to work on these sorts of TVs because of that. Everything's in a bad spot. But yeah, that's all put back in. Now I have an inspection on the back. As you can see from the back, there's that top board which is hard to service because that doesn't come off. Just too much involved. But yeah, that's all put back in. Everything over here is okay. I still am experiencing um, a bad connection through here somewhere when I plug, uh, plug a signal into it. It's not the RCA cable, it's in here somewhere. I've got to inspect it here for any. Um, bad connection. So I look, at, I look in here, then we can do a test and we'll plug the HD box into it. We'll see if that um, 
green gun there, it's got better conversions. So yeah. I've got the air cooler going because it's damn hot in here, so I'll shut this off and we'll fix that. Okay, the oil as well. After I take took this thing off, that's kind of flimsy. That might have had stress for that at one time. And down here where the pins are connected, I've got to probably yeah, got a couple of broken solder tracks to re-solder, but and now that I've diagnosed that puzzle for sure, I'm going to plug a signal in and wobble that, see what happens. Okay, the oil as well. I'm still getting that suction in the picture here. I don't know where it's actually coming from, but... Well, i got the signal bit fixed up, so that's working better. Touched up a couple of bad connections and the video input's working good now. Got the wrong remote. There we go, it's picking up something. I don't know what it's doing that for, but yeah, could be an option. There we go, AV1. Now, if I press the help button, you'll see with a picture. I don't know why it greens out like that, though. I thought that resistor with a cracked joint would have fixed that, but there must be something else going on. The middle's good, but here it's all bent. So I don't know if that's a minimal oil problem or the STKs or. Capacitors going in, in the STK circuit, but let us know what you think. That was my next resort, the STKs. Those Sanyo STKs are eight dollars something each, and the full kit costs thirty-five bucks. It comes with a heat sink compound and two of those Sanyo ICs. Let's try and see what this problem is first. So any of you know how to exactly spot on what that is? Love to hear from you. So yeah. So I know he's on the island and he hung up on the Sure, it's not hard to fix. Didn't answer any of the messages. I got a conversion here. Doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. How much do you owe? Yeah. That. Could be the STKs. So I'm just going to be distracted on that song. They are um, <laughs> as old as a TV. The TV was made in 2002, so. And they're the original so, STKs, so. Like, Could be the old age getting to those chips. I'm tempted, but I'm working on a 16-hour jet lag. Oh, dinner time and the island, that means Number eight. That one's right. That one's spot on. <laughs> Where are you going to find crumpets in Honolulu? You leave that to me, I'll find them. Go back to number seven here. See, you see the green's kind of twisted a bit. Perhaps tomorrow. Yeah, it's not perfect. Sure, tomorrow. Get out of this menu. Yeah, it's not perfect, see? Anyway, yeah, that's the other problems that just need to be fixed. I'm just going to try and solve this convergence problem and that. Yeah, and this out of line problem. So, yeah. Any help be appreciated, and thanks for watching.